Well, I did it. After a lot of deliberation, quite a bit of patience, and kind of a last minute, ah, uh, screw it moment, I have reserved a Nintendo Switch console for pickup on March 3rd at 12.01 a.m. So why am I telling you guys about it? Well, number one, I kind of wanted to clarify and uh, give some updates to the hilariously outdated off-the-leash episode that went up yesterday, uh, which will also complement a full week's uh, worth of content for you guys every day to make up for our, you know, lackluster appearance over the, the winter break. So um, I guess that's an added bonus. Number two, I wanted to tell you guys that there would be content on this channel surrounding the Nintendo Switch around its launch date. Um, and that may include Let's Plays, um, hardware reviews, vlogs, or a little bit of everything. I'm not quite sure yet, but be sure to keep subscribed and uh, check us out around that time. Lastly, I wanted to talk about my expectations and predictions for the console's launch, as well as some of the hype and concern surrounding it, um, but which ultimately led me to pre-order the thing. And um, I'll be talking about my you know, decision to do that as well. So on January 13th, Nintendo held their conference with the Nintendo Switch. Uh, kind of got, you know, let people have their get their hands on it. Talked about the launch titles that would be coming out with it, as well as games that are planned for the future. And this had a lot of mixed reactions, a lot of which were negative. Um, some of which I could easily attribute to the way they presented the material, whereas the first trailer that they showed off with the Nintendo Switch was very modern very minimalist, uh, got the point across of the console way better than any advertisement I've ever seen for a gaming device. Um, they kind of resorted back to their old Nintendo tactics of some random guy uh, on stage waving about, you know, their little motion controllers and doing some weird looking gimmick. Um, completely ignoring for the most part, I think what people really thought the console, uh, what made the console special from, you know, the first reveals. So a lot of negativity swarming about that. Also, the power of the console kind of had some people um, a little nervous, especially when they confirmed, at least through IGN at this time, that Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild would only play at 900p 30 frames per second while docked on a TV, but at 720p, 30 frames per second uh, in handheld mode, matching the native resolution of the screen. So some people are saying, oh, wow, you know, for $300, this thing is like barely more powerful than a Wii U. Um, and then when they started talking about peripheral pricing and how it doesn't even include the charging handle for the Joy-Cons, you have to plug them into the tablet um, for it to charge without, you know, if you just buy this, the base bundle and they started talking about how, uh, all the other peripherals were quite a bit more expensive than what we're used to in the industry by the pro controller being $70 us, the joy con pairs being 80, uh, individually being 50 people started adding up all these hidden costs of the system. And ultimately a lot of people are concluding that it's too expensive for what it is. Its launch titles are also under attack by a lot of people, and while it does have the blockbuster Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which, let's be real, that's a lot of the reason people are interested in this thing, um, we also have 1-2 Switch, some paper-cutting game, and a couple other things that we've probably already played before. Um, so we have, you know, at this time, six or seven launch titles, and then stuff will start rolling out in, you know, March, April, May, and through winter, confirmed, um, a lot of those which we've already played as well. But even after this presentation, which left a lot of people feeling a little bit more negative than they did initially about this console, it still is sold out. Um, GameStop had an initial volley of about 500,000 units up for pre-order. I saw it up the day before. It was gone by the next morning, uh, including even their $400 to $500 bundles and included games and you know extra peripherals. Other sold-out retailers include Amazon, Target, Best Buy, and to some extent, Walmart. Um, they're sold out online, at least. So, their initial prediction of, oh, well, 2 million units at launch will be plenty, it's not shaping up so well. Um, I think we're going to get into another Nintendo Wii spot here, where everything is, you know, sold out at launch, and you're going to be hard-pressed to find anything within a month of the console's release if you want it immediately. But this selling out on launch day does tell me a couple things, and that is, number one, that the people who were interested in it from the get-go were probably going to get it anyway, 
And the people that felt that the presentation was lackluster and if they felt it was bad enough to not pre-order the console or, or get it on launch day, they probably weren't anyway. I myself took a lot of the information from that presentation and, you know, I didn't feel more hyped for the console. I didn't feel like I had to have it right now. I have even tempered expectations at this moment, but I also find it, you know, I found it interesting enough to still want to have it on launch day. So what do I think with the Switch going forward? Well, I think 2 million production units at launch isn't going to be nearly enough to satisfy the demand out there. I don't think 3 million is going to be enough. Um, the Nintendo Wii U sold about 3 million units at launch, and look how that console turned out. We have a couple decent games for it, a couple that really made it the console it is. We have Super Mario Maker, we have Splatoon, Mario Kart 8... But for the most part, we had a handful of games that sold this console over its lifetime. And we have the Switch, which already has that in almost, you know, a month after its launch. Some reports are saying that they're expecting 13 million units to be produced by the end of the year, by the time the holiday season rolls around, because of uh, specs and leaked reports from their screen supplier. But I would be hard-pressed to think that that may be not even enough. Um, we are talking about the Japanese market in conjunction with America, and of course Europe as well. And when you talk about things like the Xbox One and PlayStation 4, which, although the PlayStation 4 had a pretty good margin in Japan, they're not nearly as popular as a Nintendo product. So I think this thing, even after all of this you know, negativity swirling around on the internet of, oh, it's not nearly as powerful as I think it should be for $300, blah, 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 I think it's going to absolutely smash sales records. And let's also talk about that price point for a minute. At 300 bucks, this thing includes basically the bare necessities you need to play it, um, both on a couch setting as well as docked in, you know, um, or undocked in tablet mode in your hand. Um, is that the best proposition value for a home console out there today? Technically speaking, no. You can get a PlayStation 4 or an Xbox One from anywhere from 250 to 300 bucks, usually with games bundled. Uh, with an included 300, or I mean 500 to 1 terabyte hard drive, uh, 500 gig to 1 terabyte hard drive that is. Um, so with this, you're getting a you know slightly underclocked Xbox One basically without any games on it. So from that perspective, no, it is not the best value right now, but there's a lot more value in it than just a home console. You get a portable handheld as well. And let's not forget that three years and some change ago that the PlayStation 4 launched at $400 without any games and the Xbox One launched at $500 because they wanted to push their little pretty Kinect. So I personally have not any problem paying $300 for the Switch considering that it is slightly less powerful than I'd hoped, but it, ought, you know, it has so much more value to it than just something that sits in front of your TV. Also, it's worth mentioning that this is actually the third cheapest console launch to date if you adjust for inflation. You know, people think, oh, well, you know, the SNES and the NES, they were more affordable back in the day. They were not. Uh, adjusted for today's money, they costed more than most gaming PCs do. Um, and I think they were a lot more advanced, at, you know, at the time than these consoles are now. But you can get by with a lot less and have a lot more fun nowadays. So there is a trade-off. Now, for 300 bucks and a handful of decent games that you may or may not have played before, is it worth buying launch day for everyone? Absolutely not, and it's not the case for any new, you know, console or platform that comes out. I think this thing is going to be a hellion to play against, though, during the holiday season. I think this thing's going to really pick up steam around then, when it'll probably become bundled with games like Super Mario Odyssey and uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Mario Kart. 8 Deluxe Edition and Splatoon 2 and all these games that uh, will be heavy hitters, not only as a console game, but, you know, something that you can grab and play on the go. I also think that the increased sales will ultimately inspire a lot more third-party support than we've ever seen from a Nintendo console. Um, I've already seen it at launch more so than I've ever seen with a Nintendo console, so I really do think this is a bit of a game-changer for a company that is ultimately stepped outside of the console wars, stepped outside of what, you know, the PC gaming industry has always tried to accomplish and will be expanding their markets in both directions towards more casual players and towards more hardcore players at the same time. So that's all well and good, but what ultimately pushed me to shell out $300 for this thing on launch date? 
I've never bought a console on launch date, even the Xbox One, the Xbox 360, original, PlayStation 2, in, count them. I've never bought a piece of hardware on launch date, ever, actually. Um, I got the Xbox One soon after, but still not on launch date, so why this one of all things? I have a console that is just as powerful, if not a little bit more powerful than this. I have a gaming PC that eats the Xbox One for breakfast and would, you know, devour the Nintendo Switch for a snack. Um, so why am I dropping 300 bucks on something that isn't going to be prettier or provide 1080p, 60fps, or upscaled 4K like the PS4 Pro? Well, there's multiple reasons, one of which being that I am excited for the games that are coming. Uh, Breath of the Wild does look fantastic, and I replayed Ocarina of Time recently on 3DS, or 2DS rather, and I've been looking forward to that game, and I figure it's the best platform to play it on, so that's a pretty good excuse there. I also think it has some fun potential for some multiplayer stuff to do on the channel, such as the Binding of Isaac, um, you know, playing with the sideways uh, Joy-Cons, or even Mario Kart 8. But ultimately, the thing that drove me to buy it on launch day, besides it just being interesting, is that I feel like I'm going to enjoy actually using the console itself. Let me clarify what I mean. Um, when I bought the Xbox One, I was excited to try out what was called, you know, a new generation of gaming. Uh, I'd already experienced a bit of it on PC, but, you know, I was excited to see what kind of new IPs were coming and, you know, play true 1080p or close to it for a lot of these games. Um, video games on my couch. Um, I did enjoy stuff like Dead Rising 3. I actually still enjoyed Rise Son of Rome, even if it was, you know, extremely simple. Um, extremely enjoyed Master Chief Collection going back through classic Halo games uh, and all the, you know, random stuff I played in between. What I didn't really care about, though, was the specs of the hardware or actually using the console. You know, the Xbox One controller is great and all, but after an hour, I was completely adjusted to it and just couldn't go back to the 360 controller. Um, I love using it. It's comfortable and it's, you know, more optimized, I feel, but it's not fun to use. It's just a tool, you know, to have fun in the good games. And it's kind of the same thing with PC, except I get this other factor of enjoyment from performance and cool peripherals and all that sort of thing. What I miss from consoles and something I haven't felt for a long time from, you know, even PlayStation 2, Xbox original days, um, I'd have to go further back to feel like I've had fun just playing on the console itself. And I mean stuff like Nintendo 64. I mean stuff like the SNES or the Game Boy S, you know, Advance SP. They just were fun to use, um, even with less than stellar games on them. I had a better time a lot of the time playing just eh games on that console than I did playing, you know, full AAA amazing titles on um, the Xbox One. Of course, there's a bit of nostalgia mixed up in there, but I kind of had the same feeling on 2DS. It was just a fun platform to use. It was, you know... Uh, comfortable to hold. It kind of felt unique. I like the dual screen system, even at, you know, a lower resolution. And I just feel the same vibe from the Nintendo Switch, um, especially being able to go from chilling on a couch to standard console mode, but being able to take it out and just chill in bed and play Zelda in your handheld, or you can even pull out the kickstand and put it on the nightstand next to you and just, you know, play with the controller that way. I think it's going to be a fun console to use, not just a platform for good games to play and that's kind of what I miss um I don't care about the power I really don't even care that I'll be playing Zelda at 30 FPS I've never played a Zelda game higher than that so uh you know I, I guess it's a good thing going in that way um I have powerful stuff for that what I don't have though is this platform that is just fun to use on its own and I think it's going to deliver that I really do um, not to mention that it is dipping for the first time into more of both the extremes of catering to hardcore gamers, um, but at the same time sticking their foot in a different market with more casual stuff and bridging the gap. So I think it's an, you know, an interesting concept and it's interesting enough to me that for the first time I will be picking one of these up on launch night and we'll see there 
If it has met my expectations, maybe it'll exceed them. Maybe it'll fall flat on its face and I'll give one of the most scathing reviews uh, for a piece of hardware out there on the internet. Who knows? But um, I've been happy with what they've shown so far and I miss Nintendo, you know? Um, I owned every console they made from the NES up until GameCube and played plenty of GameCube at friend's house, um, owned Advance SP and the Game Boy Advance and the Game Boy Color and kind of fell out of them. Um, had a Wii at home that I screwed around with on Mortal Kombat and Wii Sports, of course. Wii U looked awful to me um, and skipped the 2DS, DS stuff up until this past summer when I replayed Ocarina of Time and I'll probably be getting rid of that soon anyway, but I, you know, I kind of miss them. I, I like them in my life. So, um, I think this is the perfect way to do it too, with this hybrid concept. So we'll see you on March 3rd, uh, but be sure to stick around and, and see how we like it and all the random content that will be coming from that. Uh, tell me what you think. If you've pre-ordered where you found it, um, or if you don't plan on buying it at all, at all, or if you plan on waiting and see how the console matures over time. So that's my two cents. I guess we'll see you on March 3rd and see if um, our dreams come true. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See ya.